Hi everyone, I'm Chester. Today, we'll be talking about MC Squared, a platform for secure collaborative computation. MC Squared is a collection of sub-projects here in the RISE lab with the overarching goal of enabling multiple parties to collaborate and compute on sensitive data, or data they don't want to share with one another. Within MC Squared, we have two approaches for privacy preserving collaborative computation. The first approach uses cryptographic protocols to achieve security. While this approach doesn't require alternate trust assumptions or specialized hardware, it is slower than our other approach, which is the use of hardware enclaves. This approach requires trust in the hardware and has been shown to be vulnerable to side channel attacks. However, it is faster than the cryptographic approach. And as we'll explain later, MC squared mitigates a whole host of side channel attacks by eliminating access pattern leakage. Moving now to our stack, on the cryptography side, we leverage cryptographic primitives like multi-party computation, homomorphic encryption, and zero-knowledge proofs to securely perform SQL analytics or convolutional neural network inference, train linear models, or provide cost modeling. On the hardware enclave side, we provide security guarantees by building on top of the ever-growing number of enclave offerings such as Intel SGX, ARM Trust Zone, or Keystone to enable analytics in the form of Spark SQL or gradient boosting in the form of XGBoost on confidential data. We additionally augment the security provided out of the box by enclaves by employing data oblivious algorithms that protect against access pattern based side channels. On top of our cryptographic and enclave execution engines, we provide a unified Python API and policy engine that will empower developers and users to specify compute, privacy, and release policies and to interact with and build secure applications for tasks like anti-money laundering, fraud detection, or medical research with even limited knowledge of the security space. In this talk, we'll specifically be focusing on the Fortified Enclave Execution Engine. We'll first discuss how an end user would use a Fortified Enclave Execution Engine in three steps. In our example, we have three clients on the left, each with sensitive data. In the cloud, there's a deployment of VMs of Enclave support, each of which is running MC squared software. First, each client attests all enclaves. Attestation is a cryptographic process through which a client can verify that the proper code and the proper software has been loaded within each enclave. Second, each client encrypts its sensitive data with its key. It then uploads its encrypted data to the cloud, where MC Squared can use it for processing. Third, clients collaboratively execute a training pipeline. As an example here, Clients predetermine that they want to first load their aggregate encrypted data and then train a model on their collective data. Each client first sends a request to load data to the cloud. Once all clients have sent a request, MC Squared will execute the request. Next, each client sends a request to train a model. Once all clients have submitted the command to train, MC Squared trains a model on the collective data within enclaves. Results are then encrypted with each party's key and sent back to each party. Moreover, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for the end user to write secure programs. As a result, we've designed the MC Squared API to be as similar as a non-secure equivalent as possible. Here's an example from our secure XGBoost module. This is an example of code from the original XGBoost library that operates insecurely. To train a model securely on encrypted data, a user need only modify a few lines of code. Near the beginning of the talk, we mentioned that MC squared mitigates access pattern based side channels. To do so, we employ data oblivious algorithms to prevent a wide array of side channel leakage. For example, in the case of decision trees, tracing the memory access patterns can leak complete ordering of samples in a dataset or which feature is being partitioned upon at each node. To make our algorithms data oblivious, we at a high level build up a tree at a level wise granularity in one single scan of all data samples. This prevents the aforementioned leakage. If you're interested in more details regarding our side channel mitigations for XGBoost, you can take a look at our paper that was re recently accepted to a CCS workshop, which can be found at the bottom right link on archive. To wrap up, MC Squared is a platform for secure collaborative computation. We take two approaches to preserve privacy, an approach based on cryptography and an approach based on enclaves. In the spirit of Berkeley, We've open sourced some of our work on GitHub at github.com slash mc2-project slash mc2. Next up, we'll present a tutorial on a module of MC Squared, Secure XGBoost. 
Before we do so, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank everyone who's collaborated with us on MC Squared. Today, we'll be presenting a tutorial on Secure XGBoost, a library that enables collaborative gradient boosting using tree learning on sensitive data. Secure XGBoost is based on the very popular XGBoost library. Secure XGBoost leverages hardware Enclave to perform computation in a secure environment and also offers a data oblivious mode that prevents access pattern based side channel leakage from the Enclave. In Secure XGBoost, there are multiple clients and one untrusted cloud. Today, we'll be breaking everyone into small groups of four, and each group will be forming a collaboration. Each member of the group will be acting as a client. While in practice, no one entity will own or control the enclaves running on the cloud. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll need one person to act as the enclave server to set it up. More on that later. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Mushroom dataset, which contains 22 features. Each feature represents a physical characteristic of a particular mushroom sample. Labels are binary and represent whether a mushroom sample is edible. As such, the dataset lends itself quite nicely to a binary classification task. If you'd like to spark your imagination a bit, you can imagine that you're part of a mushroom enthusiast group and have yourself stumbled upon some mushroom samples whose edibility is unknown even after much examination. One way to determine their edibility is of course by trying each sample, but sampling even one poisonous mushroom would mean the end of your mushroom collection career. Instead, you decide to team up with a few other mushroom enthusiasts to combine your data and train a more robust mushroom edibility classification model. However, being a mushroom collector isn't easy work and your samples are valuable. You don't want other mushroom enthusiasts to have access to your hard-earned data. In this notebook, you'll be setting up your client and encrypting your data. You'll first need to enter your username to identify your client. Make sure that your username doesn't contain any spaces. You'll then generate a certificate to authenticate yourself to the enclave and a key to encrypt your data. Next, you'll be choosing a set of training and test data. We split up the mushroom dataset into four portions, one for each member of the collaboration. Talk among yourselves and decide who will be using or owning each set in this tutorial. Once you've chosen a set of data, examine the data in playtext and confirm that it's human readable. Then, encrypt your data and examine the encrypted data to confirm it's encrypted. Once you've finished this step, please wait for breakout rooms to reconverge. Let's now do a quick run through of exercise one. First, let's set up our user by inputting a username. My username will be Chester. This cell might take a little bit to run. We can run the next cell to generate a key pair and a certificate and the following cell to generate a symmetric key that we will use to encrypt our data. We now have to choose our training and test data. For the purposes of this demo, I will be the first user. As we can see, the data is unencrypted and in human readable format. We now have to specify the path to our training data and test data so that we are able to encrypt them. We can retrieve the, the, the path to our data from the above. Let me now run this cell to specify the paths and actually encrypt the data. We can now examine our encrypted training data by specifying our username in this cell. As we can see, the data has now been encrypted and is not human readable. We can now run this last cell to store important variables for use in subsequent notebooks. Once you've finished exercise one, you'll need to assign one person in the group to serve as the Enclave server and launch the Enclave. To demonstrate a collaboration, I'll split my screen in half to simulate two parties. The notebook on the left will serve as my group member being the Enclave server, and the notebook on the right will serve as a group member serving as a client. As the Enclave server, you'll need to fill in a list of all the usernames in your collaboration. Make sure that capitalization is preserved. 
The non-Enclave server members of the collaboration should see a notebook showing the code that the Enclave server is running. For exercise 2 and exercise 3, it may also be good for the Enclave server to share their screen in the breakout room so that all members of the collaboration have reference while completing those exercises. Once the Enclave server has launched the Enclave, everyone can move on to exercise 3. Exercise 3 is the same regardless of role, so I'll go back to one full screen window during the following explanation. First, we'll need to fill out the IP address of the Enclave server so that every party can transfer their encrypted data and communicate with the Enclave server. We suggest that the Enclave server copy and paste their IP into the Zoom chat. You'll then transfer your encrypted data, which you encrypted in exercise 1, to the Enclave server over SCP so that MC Square can process it. Next, you'll initialize your client by passing to MC Squared a list of all usernames in the collaboration and attest the Enclave deployment set up by the Enclave server to verify that the proper code has been loaded inside the Enclave. Once the attestation is complete, you and all members of your collaboration will begin collaboratively training. First, pass in a map of usernames to training data to create an aggregated dataset over all parties' data, and then train a model on this aggregated dataset. Once the model has been trained, each party will use the model to get test predictions on their own test data. Remember that in Secure XGBoost, an enclave will only execute a command if all parties submit it. So here, every party will have to submit a request to load every party's test data. Please note here that all parties should load parties' test data in the same order. For example, if there are Alice, Bob, Charles, and David in my collaboration, each member in the collaboration should, for example, load Alice's data, then Bob's data, then Charles's data, and lastly, David's data. We can then use our trained model to serve predictions on each party's data. Predictions are encrypted and we'll only be able to decrypt the predictions belonging to our own test data. Make sure you decrypt the right set of predictions. Once you've finished exercise three, we'd really appreciate it if you could fill out a form giving us feedback on the tutorial, your thoughts on MC squared and on this space in general. Let's now run through exercise two and three. I have two notebooks to simulate two parties in the collaboration. The notebook on the left belongs to user Chester, and the notebook on the right belongs to user Chuck. Chester will serve as the Enclave server. For the Enclave server, we'll need to input a, a list of user client of, of client usernames. We can then run this out to start the server, and everyone in the collaboration can now move on to the next notebook. We'll then need to fill in the IP address of the Enclave server. This is Chester's IP address, which is 52.188.155.4. Now let's transfer our data. And initialize our client. Here again, we'll need to input a list of client usernames in the collaboration. And now we perform remote attestation. We'll now need to do the same for Chuck. Input the Enclave server IP address, transfer our data, and initialize our client. Chuck will now attest the Enclave deployment that Chester has spun up. Next, Chuck and Chester will collaboratively load their data into one aggregated dataset. To do so, we need to specify the paths to each user's training data. So Chester can now run this cell to load the data, but the cell will block until Chuck also runs the cell with the same command and arguments. 
Once both Chuck and Chester have run the cell, the data will be loaded. They can both now decide to train a model by running this cell. And once that cell has been run by both parties, MC squared will execute the training command. Next, Chuck and Chester will load their test data into, into uh, D matrices. Chuck and Chester decide that we can load Chester's data into dtest1 and Chuck's into dtest2. Again, the cell will block until Chuck has also run the command. So we see here that MC squared has successfully loaded the test data for both Chuck and Chester. Now, we will call the predict function to get predictions on our test data. This cell will again block until both parties have run it. Now, once we have received our encrypted predictions, we will now need to decrypt them. Chester's test data predictions have been loaded into ankpreds1 and numpreds1. We specify that in the, in the argument to decrypt predictions to retrieve our predictions. Now let's say that Chuck is a bit malicious and wants to see if he can retrieve Chester's predictions on Chester's test data. So he also specifies ankpreds1 and numpreds1. So Chuck gets an error. We see here that Chuck received an error, a decryption error, because he does not have the proper key to decrypt Chester's predictions. Chuck gives up and decides to, predict his own, to decrypt his own predictions, which succeeds. To summarize, in this tutorial, you generated a key pair and a certificate and encrypted your sensitive mushroom data. One member of your collaboration launched an enclave that served as a central point of collaboration. Your group pooled their sensitive data without actually exposing the data to anyone and trained a model on the pooled data. You then use the jointly trained model to get predictions on your test data.